So by the time I reach here every day, my world is uh, boiled down this little area. My name's Quentin. I'm 55 years old and I'm a dialysis patient. I've been a dialysis patient now for a year and a half. I am currently awaiting a living donor uh, and a cadaver donor if the living donor doesn't work out. Uh, frankly, I'd take a, a kidney from a pig at this point, but they told me that the hearts haven't been working out, so I have to wait for the pig kidney. Um, takes a minute to get in my head every day. Even though you do this every day and you know you depend on it to live, it takes a little, uh, almost psyching up to get ready for the procedure. Now everything I have here are all just parts of my setup. So if I disappear out of this shot, you'll know why. Turning on my Liberty Cycler so it'll warm up. Actually kind of an ironic name for a machine you're chained to about nine hours a day, but, you know, there it is. I guess it's liberating me from the coffin, so that's okay. Um, it, it, there's not a lot to say. The routine doesn't change every day. Uh, when you start this process, you have to go into a class to learn, and I was very fortunate to be trained by uh, Nurse Julie Kennedy at Avantis, who um, would use a stun gun if I did things wrong, and, and actually shock me so that I would do the correct things. And that way, I learned. Actually, that's not true. Julie is a very nice woman. She rarely uses a stun gun. Uh, what I'm taking out here is I have my special supply trolley. And what this is, is everything I need on a day-to-day -day basis for my dialysis treatment. And just a convenient trolley. Plus, everything I has, have has to stay aseptic and away from everything else everyone else has. So I have my own Q-tips, my own gauze supplies, my island dressings, my masks, my blotters, my splits. I keep my genomycin, which is my exit wound cream. Everyone should have one of those, pardon me, while well, I start the machine there. And uh, so the procedure always starts, for me anyway, with a... Um, cleaning of the exit wound. Uh, for that, the procedure's changed a little bit in the last six months. This is except It's the um, cleaner that we use on the exit wound and on our skin. It's safe to use on our skin. This is Elkavis. We used to do a one-minute scrub and then a one-minute soak with the Elkavis. And they told us it was vitally important to do because if we didn't do it, we would die. And they even showed us a chart of how long it would take us to die. Uh, so I was quite surprised when they called and said, hey, listen, that thing we told you you had to do because if you don't do it, you die. Yeah, don't do it anymore. So uh, I trust my doctors, though, so I do what they say. You'll note I do not have a medical degree. Um, never claimed to have one. And I apologize for anyone who's had a surgery from me and didn't understand that. All right, those are my gauze, and then uh, this is this is all part of the setup that they taught me when I was going through my dialysis school to learn how to do all this stuff. And it uh, now seems kind of routine, but it's also kind of important. So for me, after I got out of my dialysis training, I tried to set up everything here in my little inner sanctum to be roughly the same as it was in the hospital, if not a little better. Let me show you a couple things here. These are magnetic vent covers so that um, before you start you have to turn off fans and cover the vents because you don't want to make a connection and have stuff blown around in the air. You'll get an infection and they'll be able to tell you where the infection came from. So you have to be very careful with that and these are fantastic because you can just slap them over the vents and you don't have to have really good dexterity which I don't thanks to multiple surgeries. So these help. I can just slap them on the vents and go, and uh, they can store on my cart when I'm not using them. And the cart, of course, is on wheels, as 
everything is because uh, when you're working in tight spaces, you need to do this stuff. My little medical table before I ever set this up was all scrubbed and sanitized. And then, of course, it also has the under pad on it. So I try to be as careful as possible when I'm doing things like this. Let me see. Now, I've already uh, scrubbed my hands and washed them. And I'm going to be cleaning my exit wound. And I also need to get the machine going. So every day, this is the same process I go through. Uh, 365. Dialysis does not know Christmas. Dialysis doesn't give a shit about your birthday. It doesn't know when your anniversary was, and it does not care. It uh, needs feeding from you daily. I call it the beast, um, but honestly, it's a love-hate relationship because this machine keeps me alive. What you're seeing here is a cassette. Every day when you do a treatment, this cassette has to be put into the cycler and that actually takes some getting used to and getting it in correctly because you have to tab it in and make sure it closes correctly in the door and now the machine starts. So I can start getting the bags of solution ready. Uh, in my case, the bags come in three strengths. 1.5 2.5 and 4.25. My current prescription calls for all greens, which is uh, 2.5s. And that means that I will be taking 10 liters of fluid and pumping it into my abdomen every day. Because the way this treatment works uh, is through osmosis and diffusion. If you don't have any manual dexterity or strength doing these bags every day, apart from being loud, they're heavy. And when you get a bag, pardon my noise here, when I stow my trash. So each day, you hook up all your bags, and they hang on the cart, which has to be balanced, or you will flip your cart over. Uh, usually, I can do this setup in the bedroom and then come all the way down the hall before I have to actually... Uh, sit down, but for purposes of showing you, I'm, I'm out here without having to push it down the hallway. I, I didn't think you needed to see that. Um, <laughs> next thing I'm going to do is a little scrub down before I connect all my tubes. Um, I learned that most people don't know how to wash their hands, let alone do a scrub down properly. So I try to do my best, and you go till you're dry. In case you wanted to know. Uh, this is seems like really minor stuff, but if you don't, again, any chance of getting an infection gives you a peritoneal infection, which is something you really don't want in your stomach. It's not a, not a pleasant experience and can often lead to death. Okay, so next we're going to start getting our connections made. Packets always get a little tricky in here. First thing we always do is the drain bag. So you've got little connections down here. This is where all your exiting fluid goes. Uh, unlike hemodialysis, which actually takes the blood from your body and cleans it a little bit at a time, this process uses uh, osmosis and diffusion, like I said, and it does it by pumping all this fluid in. So it's actually easier and more gentle on your system even though you're doing it every day. The hemodialysis takes more out of you and has more uh, negative side effects, let's say that. Um, not that this isn't killing me, but it is keeping me alive. Right, so it's not something I want to do forever. And um, getting the right kidney and the right donor is really important. Uh, okay, so. 
And that's anyone with an O or an A, because I am an A positive. And then after they do quite a bit of blood work, if you're wondering, I'm connecting my bags, and as I connect them, there are cones inside that you have to break, or if you don't, the solution won't flow. And every time I get a bag out, we do what we call a scale, which is checking for the strength, the clarity, the amount of solution, and leaks and expiration date. That's all you're looking for, to make sure that everything's in line, the bag's not leaking anything, hasn't been punctured, or somehow just not right. If the fluid doesn't look right, you can't use it. So that's just the first step, is starting to get all your bags hooked up. Then once you have these connected, the process gets fairly self drink You break your cones. And now it's starting to charge itself up and set up. So we can get back to our work here. So for basic everyday purposes, uh, I just got a new transfer set yesterday. Let me explain how this works. This is the transfer set, and then the catheter runs from this part into my abdomen. So when they did the surgery to place this, they put the coil, goes down and into my peritoneum, and sits way down in there. And so the fluid gets pumped in through that coil. Uh, they've actually got two pieces of Velcro in here which cause scarring, and that scarring causes it to heal in place, and that helps cure the line. Now, if we get a donor, a living donor, that will come out, possibly on the day that you have the surgery for the kidney. Uh, the kidney will go down here in my, in my pelvis. It's the only place you have space in your body for it, basically, and then they make all the rewiring and make sure it works before they let you leave the hospital. So there's quite a bit that goes on there just to get you to the point where you're safe to be uh, out in the public, as it were. And then you've got months of immunosuppressive therapy that will uh, keep your body from rejecting the kidney and make sure that you get healed to the point you need to be. Uh, I always have a problem when I think about how much time it takes and the actual volume of fluid. So when you're doing 10 liters of fluid, you do the math, because God knows I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a scientist, and i got to do this stuff. Uh, but it's 10 liters a day times 365 days a year, and I've been doing it for 18 months, so... Um, not to... Uh, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Not at all. And yet there's half a million of us here in America doing this every day. And most aren't as lucky as I am to have a living donor on the horizon. And a lot of them don't have the ability to get around and move as easily as I do. I can't lift all the boxes that come in because of this tube in my abdomen. I have a weightlifting restriction, along with the fact that I have a AFib. Now my heart's getting better. Kind of funny, huh? When your kidney works, your heart doesn't have to work as hard. So everything's been coming along. As you can tell, I'm still fat. It didn't change that. So that's my exit wound. Ta-da! Um, interestingly, I don't have to wear the mask usually when I clean the exit wound. But I wear it when I connect for everything else, just so that, uh, again, I don't infect myself. Um, God knows what I have. Although they're testing for it now, so if I have it, they're going to find it. And then you have to take your uh, accept, and you have to clean your wound. You, they, they teach you how to do it, and again, I've never done it any differently than what the nurses have taught me, because Julie beats me. Um, oh, I'm not supposed to tell people that. And then, um, I do, though, clean my 
catheter up, the line running in from that, and then I do a second one, which is a lot wider outring. And that's all, and that helps take care of the tape and anything else that was on there. I'll take that right down there to the end. So now we have to break our other two cones, and, or rather, clamp the other two lines. We've already broken the cones. Um, but you've got extra lines. Some people actually have two more bags. There are people who have to do this 24 hours a day, and they're on the machine. I am lucky that I only get to be on... <laughs> lucky I get to be on... I'm lucky I get to be on eight and a half hours a day. Um, but unfortunately, my catheter placement's a little odd in that when I lie down at night, I get negative ultrafiltrations. So I have to do my treatments during the day, which means it's a big chunk of my day. A third of every day is, well, here, just in this uh, little space. I, I live in about 800 square feet with three other people. So this gets a little confined, even on the best day. And uh, you have all the boxes coming in for the supplies. You have to turn a portion of your house into a warehouse. You have to maintain an inventory. You have to become machine literate and computer literate and suddenly actually have some basic nursing skills. Um, pardon me, I need to put my genomycin in. So, this is, in essence, saving the government lots of money. Because if we all did these treatments, in the hemo centers, or every one of us required a nurse uh, to do all this, we'd have, well, we'd have a real problem because we have a nurse shortage now as it is, thanks to people being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, fucking stupid about masks. Uh, I, I have very little patience for the mask argument. Um, I know masks work because they insist on it with me so I don't die. You know, so, pardon me, I've got to kite my line. When you uh, put your line in, <laughs> and you'll learn this quick and hopefully not the hard way, got to do a couple of things. One is kite your line there, which is taking it there so that when someone pulls on your line, it doesn't pull right at your in decision side, but it actually pulls off the tape, and then we're going to go one step further because um, <laughs> I've had people trip on my line a few times, uh, thankfully not doing any very long-term damage. <laughs> my tube's still in and we're still on track, so that's good. So I always make sure I have a second rip line that I put on my substantial gut. Okay, now let's put this ugly thing away. All right, so now all my bags it's showing are connected and the machine sees them. So they're essentially close to their uh, part and now it'll go through its next step, which is getting it ready for me, which means it'll flush the lines and then it'll prime the lines. Because the last thing in the world you want when you're getting connected is air in your line because that will cause you incredible pain for hours and hours on end and you do not want that. So, uh, if I seem a little excessive with my scrub downs, it's because after I touch everything else, I always scrub down. I just, uh, <laughs> again, it's the whole not wanting to die thing. Anyone who knew me as a kid knows that I was not clean at all. So the idea that I am obsessively clean now, I mean, personally, I'm not going to say everything in my life was squeaky. Everything in my life makes some kind of noise, but that's a whole other story. All right, so now the machine uh, needs me to tell it to go ahead and prime. So let me finish my rub down here because I don't want to get alcohol on my screen because they told me that'll wear the screen out. And now it's priming, which takes about a minute. And what it does in the priming, let me move this thing out of the way now. I don't need it. Uh, it primes and dries fluid that comes up through this line here. But it takes about a minute to do. 
because it obviously has to travel that distance on the cord. And there it goes. So right now that bead's going through there and making sure there's no air in the line before I connect up. Every day, every day, cold days, hot days, beautiful days like today when everyone's out doing something and Soda Fest is going on in downtown Muhammad, this is where I'll be because what you get with dialysis is a 10 to 20 foot line. And that's it. So now it says my prime is complete. No daytime exchange is needed. So now it's telling me to aseptically connect and I just scrub my hands down. Plus this is in betadine in my kit. And one, two, three, I lock my fingers, move over and lock it in. Tighten it up before I ever put the cap on the old one. Pitch it. I double check it to make sure I've got it good and firm. Now I open my line, and I hit next, and what it does first, now I can take off my mask, is it will uh, drain any existing fluid that's on me. So if it didn't get a complete drain last night, or I'm carrying a bunch of extra fluid, it will uh, attempt to take it off with a, with a limit of, I think, 50 milliliters before. So this is drain 04, which always gets me a little confused. It's not going to pull much because I, I don't really have anything on me. This is, um, uh, I've been pretty dry and I've been working out and doing a couple of things. So it, I don't have as much fluid right now. So I can hit OK and hold that and it'll allow me to bypass it. And now what it's going to do is uh, pre-warm the filter. The bag that's on the top has a warmer underneath it and it pumps the fluid through all the bags. It mainly uses these two bags and this third little bag is just to keep the machine primed because if we didn't have it, it wouldn't quite get the full treatment in. So, as you can see, the little pink in my line. That's me. <laughs> and now it's ready for fill one of four. But before it'll fill, it has to warm this to the proper temperature because um, a lot of cold fluid pumped directly into your abdomen is um, well, not pleasant. It's the only way to describe it. And we're filling. So what it'll do now is put in 2,500 milliliters of solution. And that will dwell for an hour and a half. And we'll repeat that uh, four times in a day until we get all 10,000 milliliters in. By the end of the treatment, uh, you're pretty tired. <laughs> it, it, it's rough on your body, it's rough on your mind, and it's confining. As you can see, um, even when things are ideal, I get 20 feet. 20 feet. And, and, and it, there's also being afraid of your own kids because they have to wear masks around me when they come home from school often so that I don't pick up something they've done. And that's not going to change for at least half a year. And then they tell me that after you get the kidney, <laughs> the insurance companies, uh, and it may be a little less uh, common, but they often try to get you the hell off their insurance as quickly as they can. Um, like I'm on Medicare now because and have disability because of my end-stage renal disease and some other things. And... Um, one year from the date of surgery, they stop all of that. <laughs> and this is uh, all been expensive. And in any sense of that word that you can imagine, it's been costly. So I hope to have a breakthrough here real soon. I know there are people trying, and I even know who some of them are. But um, you don't really call someone and say, hey, about that kidney you were going to give me. <laughs> I keep remembering the Monty Python skit, the organ donors. Sadly, that doesn't work. Um, so it fills up. And this during this process, you have to not move around a lot. If you crimp your line, the machine beeps. 
If you uh, walk away and the line gets under a wheel, it beeps. Um, and then it stops, and then that messes up your treatment, and uh, it's an all day of, of being your own patient advisory nurse. But uh, Julie at Advantis has trained me really well and made me feel fairly comfortable with the routines that we do. And even though it's quite complex and quite tedious, it's also quite magical. I mean, this keeps me alive. And I, um, it's a love-hate relationship. We talk. We talk. You can't be with something nine hours a day and not develop a, a very intimate relationship with it. I mean, not that intimate. Not yet. It's not that easy. Um, but I do recommend if you're ever forced into a position of having to take the dialysis option versus not getting on dialysis or hemodialysis. I would encourage you to get into uh, peritoneal dialysis. It is saving my life. It saves at least half a million lives here in America every year. Uh, we're very fortunate that we have this kind of equipment, but frankly I'm surprised we can't do better. <laughs> um, this all seems a little bulky to me, but it's because I'm attached to it. And then there's the waste afterwards, the boxes and boxes of garbage that you have. Uh, you ever got a kid that's moving? I have heavy-duty boxes, lots of them. Kind of hot, huh? Um, I do my best every day to not go mad. Um, it is tough. I'm going to see a psychiatrist this next Friday. and. Uh, Anyone who's tried to get a psychiatrist knows that takes longer than any of the medical doctors you go to because there's a, a long, long waiting list in this country of people who need help and very little proper funding for that help. So the next time you hear someone scream mental health when there's a mass shooting, scream funding back because we're not funding the right things. Okay, now I'm ranting. Uh, this is my life every day, and you have a lot of time to think, and I am grateful for the treatment being available. My God, I hate it and love it, and I want to be off it. I want to return to being in the real world with you guys. So the lockdown that you had to go through for a while, I go through every day. The mask mandate will never go away from me. There will never be an end to having to watch my social distancing with people who are going to disregard my health because their rights. I mean, we went to different schools, I guess, growing up. Um, be kind. Uh, try to take care of yourself. Try not to get on dialysis. And... They want us to tell our stories, and this is my story. And there's a lot of them out there, and mine's not the most difficult. I'm sure there's a lot of people going through a lot worse. But this is mine, and I thank you for giving me this time.